Hello friends, this is Rupesh and you are watching CPP Nuts video series on C++ and in this video we will be learning this operator overloading in C++. So let us start this. So the comment says, in C++ it is possible to change the behavior of operators plus, minus, multiplication and all that as you want. But we can change the behavior for user defined types only like classes and structure. So what is this points about, we will see in a moment. but Let's try to understand the basic understanding of these operators. So here we can see that A is initialized with 10, B is initialized with 20 and A plus B is going into C and we are printing C. So we all know that it will print 30. But how it is printing 30? Compiler knows very well that how to deal with this expression here A plus B because it is implicit type and compiler knows this very well. So if it is integer, float, character your compiler will know how to add those data types. But let's suppose you have a requirement that you have to create user defined data type. So let's create a user defined data type. Let's suppose you have a requirement that you have 2D plane and this is your X coordinates and these are your Y coordinates. And there are a few points here and there. And you want to store those points like this is P1 and this is P2, this is P3. Okay. And this is one, two, three and all the way till infinity and the similarly here one, two and three and these are integer numbers. So this is actually pointing here and this is here. So it's not a float or double, it is integer. So we will have either one, two, three or minus one, two, three. So it goes in negative also. Okay. So this is your basic requirement and you will fulfill this using either class or structure. Okay. So this is your minus x and this is your minus y side. Okay. So we all know how to deal with this in mathematical way, but let's go and create a class for this. So our class name can be a point and we want to store only two points. So like integer x and integer y and we need a constructor. So this is how it is going to look like. You have this x initialized with x and y initialized with y sorry why and that's it your constructor is ready but it should be in public section so let's make it public so there you go you have x and y in your point exactly how we discussed here now what we wanted is we wanted to add two points so let's create some points here so point p1 and initialize with one and two and another point p2 initialize with three comma four and these are two points and you want to add this point and place into P3, P1 plus P2. Okay. And this is what the requirement is. You wanted to add P1 and P2 and place it inside P3 like this. But if you will compile this code, this code is not going to work because your P1 and P2 are not implicit data type. They are not integer float and all. They are objects. So compiler doesn't know how to deal with this addition here. Okay, so in order to show you that let's compile this. It is showing that I cannot add here. See, it is giving you the error. So in order to achieve these kind of things, we use operator overloading. Now concentrate here, I will be writing an operator overloading syntax. So the syntax is your return type first that what type you want as return. So P1 plus P2, you want point as return type. Okay, because P1 and P2 both are of point type. Okay. So first we'll write written type and there is this operator. This is the keyword to write operator overloading and what operator you want to overload plus and then this round bracket and this curly bracket and then you will write this point ref RHS. So this should be the syntax of your function. First return type, then keyword operator, and then what operator you are overloading, and then constant point reference, and this is your variable name. RHS means right hand side object will come here. So actually, whenever you are performing this operation, this function will be called. Okay. And how it will be called? P1 will call this function and pass P2. Yes, it is going to work like this. 
your compiler will replace this expression something like this so let me just give you a hint here p3 equal to p1 dot operator which operator plus and then p2 will be passed as parameter here okay so you're calling this function on p1 and passing p2 okay so something like this happens instead of this one i'm giving you just a small hint how this will be happening this is not the actual syntax okay so let me just remove this and we were talking about this one so p1 is calling this function and p2 is going as a parameter here okay so remember this part and we'll do the addition here like p and p dot x is going to be x plus rhs dot x and p dot y is going to be y plus rhs dot y and we'll return this p so this is the syntax of adding p1 and p2 so if p1 is calling this function p1 is internally accessible here so this first x is of this p1 and this second x is from this p2 which is now rhs okay so we are adding x of p1 with x of p2 and similarly for y and storing that inside another object of similar type and returning that object that's why we kept this as return type and that is coming here so let's compile this code this time and it should compile see build success in that case there is no problem it is showing that unused variable so if you want to check whether it really worked let's create another function a print function which will print the values so see out x e n d l and have this one space here x y and let's call that function on p3 p3 dot print so let's run this see our code is adding one with three which is resulting as four and two with four result which is resulting as six so we have achieved adding two objects using operator overloading technique here so not only this plus we can overload minus operator also so if uh, there is some another p4 is equal to p3 minus p1 then this should work right so if you will compile this and it will tell you that there is no minus operator overloaded i mean it is saying that i don't know how to deal with this line so let's go ahead and do that as well so i'll just simply copy and paste this one here and change this minus and everything will be similar minus and minus that's it so this p3 will be calling this operator function and p3 will be internally accessible so x is of p3 and this rhs dot x is this p1 so if you will print p4 now dot print then in that case you should get the actual value so let's run that so p4 is printing 3 and 4 so let's check that so p3 after this one is this one so 4 minus 1 is giving you 3 and 6 minus 2 giving you 4 so this is working this is how we overload the operators in c++ very easy right but wait a minute are you really supposed to do operator overloading in your classes in order to achieve two objects addition no you are not actually you can write something like this point add yeah you can have one add function const point ref p and similarly you can do this okay so let me just copy and paste here v and this should be rhs otherwise it will be conflict okay so this is your add function instead of adding it using operator you can add it using something else which is a function so p5 is equal to p1 dot add p2 so this function will add p1 and p2 and return the value let's check that p5 dot print and run this so this is your p5 output 
so this one is equal to this one that's why this one is equal to this one okay so you can achieve these addition and subtraction and multiplication division using functions but let's suppose you have some expression something like this so first you need to implement this one so you have to write divide function and then pass add function with this one and then minus function with this one then multiplication then addition so you will be having so much of function name here and it will not look intuitive okay it won't look like you are doing some mathematical operation so in order to achieve the intuitive way of solving any expression we overload the operators let me give you the example here just to remove this one and this one and have this y dot add of x and p dot add of w and these two things are the parameter for another one which is going to be let's say the multiplication okay so this one is going to be like dot multi or just make it mul and pass this one so as you can see here it is really confusing what you are doing here and we are doing the, exactly the same thing what is this expression here so we are adding y with x and that whole thing is multiplied by p plus w okay so as you can see here it is very tedious to write some expression in function format and it is really very hard to find the error inside this so it is always a good practice to implement operator overloading concept and achieve this expressions addition multiplication subtraction and all that so this was the introduction part of your operator overloading wait a minute we are not done here don't go we are left with few points here so the point is if we use them them means operator overloading our program becomes more intuitive you saw that right and there is another point that there are few operators we can't overload and these are the operators like this is scope resolution operator this is ternary operator this is dot operator or member access operator oh there is one operator missing here and that is f dot type id and this one is dot pointer so these operators are not allowed to be overloaded and the reason is the creator of c++ didn't find any use of overloading these operators so that is the only reason we are not able to overload these operators because he didn't allow us to overload these operators so this was about operator overloading and the main important point is we overload the operator just to make our program look more intuitive okay it's not like we cannot live without overloading the operators it's about using them so that your program will look very neat and clean and it will give you clear understanding of the operation you are performing on so this was about overloading binary plus and minus operator there are so many operators and there are different different syntax to overload them like if you will overload pre increment operator or post increment or pre decrement or post decrement there are different different syntax so we will be covering all those operators in coming videos if you like this video don't forget to hit the like button dude and make sure you subscribe to my channel so that you will get the notification for upcoming videos like this i'll see you in the next videos bye bye